we will look at response to cos omega naught n plus pi. So, what you are going to assume here is we are going to assume h of n is real valued that is the system that we are interested in has real valued impulse response. So, this implies h of e to the g omega is the same as h star of e to the minus g omega. Therefore, the magnitude response is even and the phase response is odd. Now, let us consider a cos omega naught n plus phi. So, this is nothing but a by 2 e to the j phi e to the j omega naught n plus a by 2 e to the minus j phi e to the minus j omega naught n and the response to a by 2 e to the j phi e to the j omega naught n if this were applied to the system you had this frequency response to be this output would be a by 2 e to the j phi e to the j omega naught n and then you have to evaluate each of e to the j omega at omega equal to omega naught. This after all is an Eigen signal. If you apply an Eigen signal to an LTI system, output will be exactly the same thing except it will be scaled by the frequency transfer function evaluated at that particular frequency. Therefore, this will be h of e to the j omega naught and this in turn can be written as a times e to the j phi e to the j omega naught n and h of e to the j omega naught we will write it as magnitude times e to the j phase angle. So, this will be magnitude e to the j omega naught e to the j angle h of e to the j omega naught. So, in this context we had raised the question is z naught to the n the only Eigen signal for an LTA system, right? And z naught being e to the j omega naught is a special case, therefore, if z naught to the n is an Eigen signal, e to the j omega naught n also is an Eigen signal. Remember, uh, I had asked whether this is the only Eigen signal for an LTA system. The corresponding counterpart question was is e to the s naught t the only Eigen signal for an LTA system? that question is still open. Just wanted to remind you of that, that is all, ok. Therefore, the other signal is e to the minus a by 2 e to the minus j phi e to the minus j omega naught n. Now, this when applied to this system will give you a by 2 e to the minus j phi e to the minus j omega naught n times h of e to the minus j omega naught because now you have to evaluate this transfer function at the frequency of the input. The input frequency is minus omega naught and this of course is a by 2 e to the minus j phi e to the minus j omega naught n. Now, I will write this as uh, exactly like what I did for the previous term magnitude times e to the j phase angle. So, it will be this and now we are going to use the fact the impulse response is real and the transfer function possesses symmetry. So, this in turn becomes a by 2 e to the minus j phi e to the minus j omega naught n and magnitude is even. Therefore, this becomes h of e to the j omega naught and the phase angle is odd. Therefore, this is e to the minus j angle 
h of e to the g omega naught. And now I can combine these two terms. Therefore, the output is a by 2 e to the j phi e to the j omega naught n magnitude e to the j plus a by 2 e to the minus j phi e to the minus j omega naught n. This term stays as it is because of the even symmetry. And then this is this. And now when you add, this is the same as this, of course, comes out. And the remaining term is, of course, A as it is. And then this will be nothing but cos omega naught n plus phi plus angle this and this is exactly what was happening in the continuous time case as well. If we had A cosine omega naught t plus theta applied to a continuous time system whose impulse response was real valued, you would get A times magnitude of the transfer function evaluated at that frequency times cosine omega naught t plus theta plus a term that is the counterpart of this. So, this is no different from what was happening in the uh, continuous time case. In fact, the derivation that we did just now mimicked exactly those same steps. Nothing this derivation is specific to the discrete time case. So, the implication of this is important to realize. If you give uh, cosine to the a steady state sinusoid to the system, the output also will be a sinusoid, but two things will happen. One, it will get amplitude scaled and the amplitude scaling is governed by this factor. The other thing is phase shift. And one important consequence of this is that suppose the frequency transfer function had a value of 0 at that particular frequency then that sinusoid will get filtered out. Therefore, if the frequency response is 0 at omega to omega naught, then this system will completely eliminate this particular input, that is all. And this is exactly what is happening in the continuous time case as well. In the continuous time case, if the frequency response had a 0 at that particular frequency, our output will be 0. Notice carefully that the input is A cosine omega naught n plus phi and this is a sinusoid that is of infinite duration, it is an everlasting sinusoid. And the reason I am mentioning that is we are now going to consider response to suddenly applied inputs. <laughs>